Hello, this is Shannon Flummerfelt from Flip Schools. Welcome to the Understanding Improvement Series. This video is designed for building administrators and it will help you to understand how examining instructional paradigms can be a way to help you improve your buildings. When engaging in leading flipped school cultures, there are going to be many, many opportunities for you and your faculty to examine and discuss where improvements should be made in the instructional culture of your building. One way to begin to set up these conversations or to facilitate them is by asking faculty and yourself as an administrator to examine the paradigms that you're using. So this short video is going to give you an example of how this works. First of all, let's define what paradigms are. They are actually philosophies or theories that we form around a framework or as uh, sometimes are referred to as they, they are formed into a mental model. And we use these frameworks or models to help us then to understand how we're going to apply something generally, how we're going to um, set up a law in our, in our own private lives or organizationally, or how things will be applied. So paradigms are sort of, uh, could be thought of as the drivers of practice. And that's why it's important to understand what paradigms are and to be able to collectively in a school to be able to examine what paradigms are operating. So for instance today we'll take an example and take a look at two different paradigms. One is a paradigm around traditional hierarchical structures and what that means for instruction. And then we're going to take a look at another paradigm which is a student focused structure. Again, paradigms are sort of the background or backdrop piece to what we see expressed in structures. So we have to go back and try to examine what these might mean. Here's the first example. In terms of looking at traditional hierarchical structures, we can think about our buildings um, as possibly being set up this way. And what this simply means is that we have a pyramid of stakeholders in the building and those stakeholders are rank ordered based on the amount of power and authority, decision making, and even information that they have available to themselves. So in a very traditional hierarchical structure, we would see something that would look something like this mental model where the principal is at the top or the administrative team is at the top of the pyramid then faculty are next and students are next we could put parents in here community in here there could be all kinds of layers to the pyramid but just to keep this example simple we'll look at these three stakeholders so if we have the paradigm that the principal or administrative team is at the top of the structure, that means that that is where the decision-making authority rests, that means that that is where the power rests, and that is basically where the communication and information flows from. From the principal down to the faculty, from the faculty down to the students. We know that traditional hierarchical structures tend to work well when, for instance, um, there might be a sudden crisis or a tragedy and there has to be a clear chain of command um, that's coming from the um, administrative team. However, in daily instructional practices, when this structure carries over, it certainly has implications for engagement and participation of faculty, and of course, engagement and participation of students in the overall school culture. It's not as much fun to be at the bottom of the pyramid as it is to be at the top. 
So we have to think about this paradigm in terms of how we approach our leadership practice in our school buildings as school leaders and what this particular paradigm means. In contrast, here's a second paradigm example. And this is one that is very different in regard to structure. This particular one places students at the center of the structure. This could be considered a customer-centric um, structure. The paradigms that drive this are that within the school building, we place the students at the very center of the structure, and we really make sure that they have a voice in the school, that we're very, very clear about what their needs are, that really, truly, our mission is very focused in reality on examining student needs, trying to deliver as much quality and value to students as possible. And the second ring of this structure is would be faculty, for instance, where faculty are also considered a stakeholder, but they're also supporting students. So faculty broker student needs, but also faculty needs are considered by the principal or administrative team. The outer ring of this structure is where lots of support, facilitation, and improvement work is fashioned. And so you can see that if you carry this paradigm around in your head regarding the way that your building should be led, then it's a very, very different experience in reality for the stakeholders in your building. So as you engage in flipped schools and working through the technology of flipping, also think about the improvement side of the work that you do, because in some cases, paradigms may need to be refashioned. They may need to be improved or rethought in order to be relevant in a flip schools culture. If you'd like more information, please go to the Flip Institute website at http colon backslash backslash theflipinstitute.com slash about slash. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video.